Hi, it's a new week and with a new week comes a new episode. In this week's episode, we are now going to look at how do you measure the performance of your own farm. I mean, it's possible to actually be able to judge yourself based on a score. And this is what we call a dairy farm benchmark. Now, before I go into the depth of the benchmark, I remind you to subscribe to this channel so that you get more and more lessons from us. Now, what's a benchmark? And what's all these things about measuring? What gets measured gets done. Someone say that. It means that then, if you don't measure, you don't know where you are, and therefore, you're not able to decide or to work on your improvement. Remember that a dairy farm, just like any other enterprise, succeeds through gradual improvement. So it's improvement, consistency, and gradual. So eventually, you get to optimize. When you start, there could be imperfections, there could be problems here and there, but then if you are very keen and very attentive to gradual improvement, then you end up with a farm that is successful. So welcome to this discussion. Look at uh, the measuring of the farm performance. And I'll begin by the areas where we actually do the, the performance measurement. When you look at a farm in general, just you know, passing your eyes over the cows, over the structures, over the feed stores and so on, you can be able to observe some things, but you may not be able to see the specifics in that farm. So it's still okay for a general uh, judgment, but if you want to go into the details, then you have to begin to split the farm into different areas. So for the benchmark, the basis of a benchmark is seeing the farm in small parts. And that way, you're able to see the gaps of every part, and then you can be able to improve. That basically explains the background of the dairy farm benchmark or measuring the performance of your farm. Now, which are these sections that we are dividing the a whole dairy farm into? You know, it's a whole farm, then into small parts that make up the whole. The, fa the first one, and which we have handled in detail in an earlier episode, is feeding and rations. When you go to a farm and you want to judge it, and this could be you, the farm manager, it could be you, the farm owner, but in most cases, and what we recommend, let that be an outsider. Because a person who stays at the farm and who is routinely working at the farm on a regular basis, they're not likely to see some things that an outsider may see. A person who works at the farm might have blind spots, but an outsider will be able to see things that the farmer or the farm manager may not see. So what is this we're talking about? Go to the farm, the first section, the first station should be at the feeding. Are the cows separated in groups? Then if the cows are separated in groups, then it's possible to feed them according to their needs. Are the cows ear tagged? So that we know which cow is where, which belongs where, which has what profile. So do we have that inventory of the cows? That is very important. Can we clearly see that the cows are actually having different feeds served to them? Um, maybe the dry cows are eating less energy, and the lactating cows have more energy and more protein and so on. Can that, can that be clearly visible? Then when you go to the feed, we also check, is the feed well mixed? So we score the quality of the mixing. Because the better the mix, or the more homogeneous and even the mix is, the better feed intake. That's very important. Then once we are able to see how the feed is mixed, we also check, is there a practice of measuring what cows are eating? Is there a culture of feeding by measurements? If that culture is there, the farm has a higher score. If there's no culture like that, then the farm has a low score. Then, is there a culture of checking the leftovers? How, is, uh, how are leftovers handled? Remember, if you don't check what cows have remained, then you're not able to know how much they actually ate. So if you, put, if you put an X amount of feed here, and this is what remained, then you must be able to subtract and see how much feed am I losing. So the, the very, very culture of having to measure leftovers or to make an estimate of how much feed is being left on the, on the, on the troughs, we score high when that culture is there. And then also we check, uh, is, it, is, is the manager aware of, of feeding basically the best practices of feeding? The people who work with the cows, how well are they conversant with, the, with feeding? The way to score that is just to check how they are doing the work and how they, they, they are administering the feeding, how they are mixing, how, they are, how well are they 
conversant with the whole subject of feeding. So that way, we have been able to separate and look at feeding and rations as one specific area and give it a score. We use a one to five, where the farm is performing very well, we put a five, and where the farm is performing very badly, in most cases, we put a one. We don't like to put a zero because there's always an effort that the farm is putting. So that summarizes the issues that we look at when you are scoring the section on feeding and rations. So the second part that we move to while in the farm is the young stock management or what people call calf rearing or calf care. Now, you will notice some of the areas overlapping because when you talk about feeding, you'll also see feeding featuring under young stock. Now here, we look at how, is the, how are the calves handled or taken care of? We first of all uh, check the documentation of the calves, how they are registered, how they are identified. We also check um, uh, how the calves are housed and how the calves are feeding and the general outlook of the young stock. I need to say this, that the information that we collect from a farm, to be able to score the farm, we, we pick it in, in three ways. First of all, is to interview the person who is in the farm or to be able to check the documents they have. Maybe they have a system of record keeping or they have books that they keep manually. Uh, we check the records they have or they have, you know, they, they have any records available to be able to tell us how the farm is running is what we check. And then the other thing is also to verify verification. Maybe it's about weight then you can verify by just measuring and confirming so that we have good data to be able to give an accurate score that can inform the farmer about what needs to be done. And remember that the score is not the most important thing. What is most important is the action after the score. Because the score can improve, but it is the action that you do that makes the score improve. Back to the issue of the young stock. So we check, how are the young ones when they are born? How what is the practice of weighing? Are they weighed the right way? Do they use the band? Do they use the bag? Are there are methods of uh, newborn. If they do it the wrong way, then of course we put a low score and then we also tell them how to do it. Then from there, we check how is the culture of weighing in terms of time. Do they take too long before they weigh? The closer the time, the higher the score. Then we check the food they are eating. Is the food clean or is the food not clean? Again, we give a score. Then we check the water. Is it clean? Is it available all the time? Or is it given when the manager remembers? So again, that is very risky because it exposes calves to starvation or dehydration. Again, we give a score. If, the, if, if there is a culture of providing all the time. Then we are also able to check at what point do these people introduce uh, concentrates to the calves. Because if we don't introduce concentrates, then of course we have a problem with the development of that calf in terms of growth. And then you also check at what point do they introduce a good protein feed for the calves to begin to chew so that they learn to eat and the rumen of that calf develops. If it is too late, we score low. If it is the right time, then we score high. So then we also finally check how well are the staff uh, conversant or proficient in managing the calves? By just asking the worker who is in charge of that area, tell us about how you do this work. If you see that they are not very sure, we give a low score, then we recommend for training. So that next time they are more conversant and they're able to handle the calves well. So that again shows how we score the area on calf management, calf care, or generally young stock management. The last part, in this episode is about the quality of forages. If you have listened to our discussions on silage and grass and, and uh, other fodders, then maybe you have heard some of the things you are going to say. Here, we score how does the fodders or how do the fodders look like. If the farm is feeding hay, then we check how, how stemmy uh, compared to leaf is your hay. Is it more stemmy than leafy? If it's more leafy, if your grass is more leafy, then we give it a high score. If it is too stemmy, too high structure, we give a low score. We go to the silage, we check the things that we mentioned in the silage. We check the smell, we check the shop sizes, we check how the bunker is well compacted, how it is sized concerning, how it is well sized in line with the number of cows, what is the wastage level at the bunker, um, how, how long did it take to make the silage, and then how does it look in the ration. All these things combined together, we are able to judge what is the quality of the forages and therefore determine what is the quality of the ration. Of course you might say that why don't we go to the lab and do the testing. Whenever there's a lab analysis for those folders, then we ask for that lab analysis for the current silage that is being fed at the time of the assessment and then we are able to make a judgment. But we also encourage farmers to take a sample of their folders, take them to the lab, so that you get an accurate judgment on the quality, then you're able to give us a report, an analysis report 
nutritional and elements profile of the silage, maize silage, of the hay, or any other fodder that you are giving. At this point, we don't go to judge the, the, the concentrates. However, if you have the analysis for the concentrates, then we do that judgment or we do that scoring combined. We score the forages and we also score the concentrates. Now, this episode summarizes three areas that we have uh, been able to score. We scored the feeding and rations, we give it a score, a total score. Then we went to the young stock, give it a score. And now we have gone to the quality of the fodders or the forages and we give it a score. These are like the big three in that farm. Now we shall continue with other areas that we check so that eventually this farm that we divided in small parts, we can exhaust the parts and be able to make a judgment of how the entire farm is run. So we shall take a break and as you come back, we discuss the other three sections in the next episode on how we continue to score the entire farm.